Hey everybody, I wanted to do a video right quick uh, after a really disturbing development today uh, with Marjorie Taylor Greene, representative from Georgia, posting that we need a, quote, national divorce. I talked a little bit about this on Twitter, but this is, um, this is an important topic that we need to get into a little bit more in depth. I want to go ahead and start by saying that Marjorie Taylor Greene is um, an absolute disgrace within the halls of Congress. We all know that. We're all aware that she is the most fame-chasing, attention-seeking member of the modern Congress, possibly ever. Um, her ability to just absolutely create these controversies to uh, raise money for herself or get invited onto Fox News and to raise her profile, um, it, it, it's absolutely despicable. And her ability to do this and to continue to create these controversies in order to push her herself and her brand, um, it, it, it's something that you, you really can't wrap your head around. It, it is so disturbing and just lays bare the terrible, terrible situation that we're in and, and these representatives uh, that, that continue to go and represent us by representing themselves and their own fortunes, uh, these grifters. You know, that is true. But also watching a sitting member of Congress call for secession, to call for the end of the United States of America as we know it, this is another one of those escalations that we have to discuss. Uh, why it would happen what it means, but more importantly, how we're supposed to react to this. So yes, Marjorie Taylor Greene has gotten our attention, but it's also important to point out that she has wormed her way into the mainstream of the Republican Party. Years ago, uh, you know, as she was screaming about Jewish space lasers or, you know, uh, possibly executing Nancy Pelosi, uh, all of these uh, QAnon conspiracy theories that she built her entire candidacy on from the very beginning. You know, she has gone from that to more or less sitting at the right hand of the Speaker of the House of Representatives. It, it is an indictment of the Republican Party, of the conservative authoritarian movement within the United States, but also this is a canary in the coal mine type of situation. That she would feel comfortable calling for secession and possibly a new civil war. This is a time to take stock because one of the things that we've seen from Marjorie Taylor Greene, the reason why she is now firmly in the center mainstream of the Republican Party is because she is ahead of them. She is a vanguard in what is happening within the Republican Party. Members like her, people like Donald Trump, the national conservatives, the authoritarians that I'm constantly war uh, warning about. These people are out in front of all of this. And if Marjorie Taylor Greene, much like her friend Alex Jones, goes out and says this stuff and builds a platform on this and raises money and raises awareness on this, then this is the type of call that you're going to see more and more of within the Republican Party. A lot of my research over the past couple of years has been spent with the far right, with this authoritarian movement, going through their documents, going through their speeches, going through their reports, uh, you know, what their institutes and think tanks, what their publishing houses are talking about. And I have to tell you, this idea of a national divorce, and by the way, that is a very, very specific phrasing that has been chosen for a very specific purpose. That's, a, that's a, a, an amount of branding. It is something that is meant to appeal to people who see that our political problems are intractable, that there's no way, shape, or form that we could possibly figure this thing out, that this crisis is just going to be forever and it would be better if we just left each other alone. And they don't intend to do that. That has never been the intention of any of these people. By floating the idea of secession or forming their own country, they're not being serious. What they're actually doing is floating the idea of radically and fundamentally changing the country as a whole because they see it that the Constitution and a democratic open society and liberal democracy itself is what holds them back from being able to assert the power that they believe is necessary in order to change the country in the direction that they favor. 
in all of this. This is also meant to go ahead and change the conversation and the dynamics within our politics. Floating the idea of secession says this thing's completely out of control. There is no ability whatsoever for there to be a future consensus. It's done. That cake is baked. As a result, we have to look at out-of-the-box solutions. We have to look at possible ideas such as secession or dividing the country between so-called blue states and red states. But it also goes ahead and pushes this balkanization that the Republican Party depends upon. A reminder, the GOP is a historically unpopular party. The only reason that they are competitive in presidential elections is because we have an electoral college that was created by founding fathers who were not interested in democracy and wanted to control the population. The only reason that they have sway over our national politics is because we have a Senate that was designed by founding fathers who despised democracy and wanted to create a system in which a minority of the citizens could control everything. So as a result, if we talk about red states versus blue states, what we're going ahead and doing is we are dismissing the idea of democracy writ large. We're dismissing the idea that there are so many more of the rest of us who oppose these things, who oppose the authoritarian agenda, that it goes ahead and makes it a supposed even playing field, which it is not. We have to reject the idea of blue states and red states. It is a political fiction that has been put in place by the duopoly of the two major parties. And what has happened with the balkanization of America, in which there are blue states where there are certain laws and certain ideas, and there are red states where there are certain laws and certain ideas, it plays us against one another. And we've already seen that all over social media today in response to Marjorie Taylor Greene's comments. You are seeing people, liberals, people who supposedly vote Democrat, who are saying, oh, fine, let him go. Say goodbye to him. That's a daydream. That's a fantasy. And by the way, I need to point out that it's rather heartless. I understand that you're frustrated with Republicans. I understand that you're frustrated with the GOP's tactics, what their billionaire backers are pushing, what a stolen Supreme Court makes happen in this country. I'm as frustrated as you are. But simply saying that we should sacrifice God knows how many millions of people to this authoritarian agenda, it's unbelievable. Because a red state is not a red state. Those elections are not 100% in favor of Republican policies. In fact, there are plenty of people who, if they understood the agenda of the Republican Party, wouldn't vote for it in the first place. But on top of that, there are incredibly vulnerable people in these states. We're talking people of color. We're talking poor people. We're talking women. We're talking gay and trans people. We're talking young people. We're talking people who would never have any chance at all to make their stations of life any better. Because I have to tell you, if there was an iron curtain of sorts drawn across the United States of America, there would be plenty of people that were found on the wrong side of that curtain. Not everybody can just afford to get up and move. Many of us, like myself and a lot of people that I care about and love and respect, have had to live in red states so-called red states, under Republican legislatures. They didn't do so because they agreed to do so. In fact, many of them have worked their asses off to ensure that the states could move more and more towards the center and that they could possibly defeat these things. We cannot continue to see our politics through this lens of blue states and red states. That is a trench warfare mindset that has been put in place over the past few decades in order to carve up the electorate. On top of that, it's not as simple as simply saying these are these states and these are these states. We are interdependent upon one another, and the divide is largely between urban and rural centers in these states. As a result, this entire thing is a fantasy. There is no way that this country is going to break up in a civil war type situation. I mean, it could if we continue playing these games, but we also have to quit pretending that this is a solution at all. We are interdependent. We have to rely on one another. And until we start talking about the fact that we have to rely on one another and that we should be there for each other, and we should care as much about the fates of people who are in so-called red states as we do the people in blue states, that is the only way that this agenda is going to get defeated. Marjorie Taylor Greene is a clown. 
But these ideas that she is playing with, everything from these conspiracy theories to these radical, radical ideas that she is pushing in the public sphere, they are dangerous. They move our discourse in an anti-democratic authoritarian direction. We have to stop treating this like it's a lark or like the best thing that could possibly happen is that so-called red states were separated from so-called blue states. Also, by the way, there's a tendency whenever countries divide for those countries to not maintain a peace between one another. This is no direction to go in. This is no laughing matter. This is serious business. And I got to tell you, we're in serious times and it's time to start treating these like serious times. Marjorie Taylor Greene is a buffoon, a clown, and absolutely she deserves your disrespect with the way that she has uh, treated her office and treated her platform. But don't sit there and mistake this as just something that she fired off in a tweet. This is something that has a ton of money behind it. It has been researched and, and focus grouped and just absolutely edited within an inch of its life by a lot of people who have a lot of money and they're spending that money and spending their power making sure that they're taking democracy down. So laugh all you want at Marjorie Taylor Greene, but these ideas are not laughable. And on top of that, they're not solutions. Again, serious times for serious people. So let's get serious about this.